Proper. Turn your neighbor and say proper. If you see someone proper. sleeping, just get them upside the head. Proper. Guru Hashem. So number one, don't do too much. Number two, we can learn, don't be lifted up. Number three, and I'll, let me leave this for last. Number three, do not do ministry in your own strength. What did Hezekiah King, what did King Uzziah do? He performed the works of Yahweh in the ministry, what? In his own strength, in his own power. Hello? He had no calling, no anointing, no leading, but he chose to do the works in his own strength. And that's what happens when you try to do more than you're supposed to do or try to enter a part of, of ministry that you were never intended to do in the first place. Hello? We're talking about welcome to my office. This is what happens. He tried to do the ministry in his own strength and what did he have to do to, to do it in his own strength? He had to feed on his pride. He had to do more than he could do. He had to remove Yahweh's anointed to make himself the anointed. And he did the work of the ministry rather than the 80 Kohanim who were there. And they rebuked him and they still couldn't stop him. Right? The 80 Kohanim rebuked him and still couldn't stop him. So, so that we, we are, when we, when we do our own thing in our own strength, what happens is it leads to death. What happened when he did the ministry in his own strength? Did it bring life? No. no. It brought Yahweh's judgment on him. It brought Yahweh's judgment on the nation. It brought Yahweh's judgment on the house of Beit Yehuda. And it provided Israel without a king. The people of Yehuda without a king. That's what happens when you do ministry or anything without Yahweh's blessing, his approval, and his lead. Right? When you go out on your own and you, and you, and you swim out on your own and you do your own thing, and you're not called, you're not strengthened to do that, you'll wind up not only doing your thing, you'll wind up taking ministry away from those who are called to do it, and now you're doing ministry in your own strength. Okay? And that's what King Uzziah did. He said, no, no, I can do a better job being the priest. So he went and made himself a priest. What did he do? He burned all, uh, incense at the altar where he was not allowed to burn incense at the altar. Only the Kohanim of Israel were allowed to burn incense on the altar. So what did Yahweh do? He, he, he killed him. He brought death. So doing things in ministry, in life, through your own strength, through your own calling, and not through Yahweh's strength, will lead, number one, to the neutralization of others' ministry who you are usurping and the death in your ministry and in your life. Feeling better? Good. Yahweh. So. Yahweh. I, 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 are you with me? So these are things we learned. King Uzziah did not keep his office. He was not welcoming people to his office. He was trying to usurp the authority of other people, other people's anointing, other people's calling, other people's ministry, and other people's anointing. Okay? So grabbing this microphone away from me, can, can you grab this microphone? Sure. But when you start teaching, if you're not called, if you don't have that, if that's not your particular calling, then eventually there'll be nobody here and you'll be frustrated and, and you'll wonder why Yahweh has abandoned you and you're, now you're open to those who can shake you away from the faith. Because you'll figure Yahweh has abandoned me. He didn't bless me and I was called, I taught and, and, and I hurt myself and hurt my reputation and, and hurt other people. You've got to walk in your calling. You've got to walk in your office. Number one, don't do too much. Listen, great congregations and great ministries do a few things well. We are a great ministry. You know why? Because we don't do a whole of a lot of stuff too very well. But the few things that we do well, we do well. Make sense? I'll say that again. Great ministries do a few things well. We do, we specialize in true name, salvation, two houses, when it comes to casting out demons, you have to call Tehillah. Okay, when it calls to casting out demons out of the uh, kitchen plumbing, you have to call Roto-Rooter. All right, we don't do that. We don't, we don't minister very well to homosexuals or to AIDS patients because that's not our calling. If I start ministering to AIDS patients, then A, I'm leaving my post. B, I'm doing someone else's position. 
I'm causing them to leave their post. So you've got to know what you're calling. Everyone in this room, you should not wake up tomorrow morning. You listen to me. You should not wake up tomorrow morning until you know your calling. Until you know what Yahweh has called you to do and why he's called you to do it and how he's called you to do it. Because if you start burning incense at someone else's altar of incense, they can't function. You've paralyzed them. You've confused the people who thought you were a king, but you're not a king. You're acting as a priest. The people are confused. You're causing them to be neutralized from their calling, and you're not walking in your calling, so you brought in death, corruption, and paralysis rather than clarity and understanding. Does any of this make sense? That's King Uzziah's folly. You don't want to be like King Uzziah. You want to be like Yeshua. The Pharisees tried to pull him into conversations. He didn't get sucked in. The, 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 the Yehudim wanted to take him and proclaim him king of the Yehudim and make him a king in Yochanan chapter 7. And if he would have let them make him a king, he couldn't have been Moshiach ben Yosef, who died for Israel's sins. He, they, he, they would have shifted Yahweh's plan, which was him to be Moshiach ben Yosef first and then return as Moshiach ben David. Hallelujah. They wanted to make him Moshiach ben David before Golgotha, bypass Golgotha. And so he, he didn't play ball with the Orthodox, with the Purushim, with the Tzadukim. He knew his plan. He said, hey, hey. He said, I'm going to face my face like a flint to Yerushalayim. I have a mikvah to be mikvahed with, and how straightened I am until that mikvah is accomplished in me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Can y'all wait? And what do I care if the world is kidnapped? Mm -hmm. What do I care? I have a mikvah to be mikvahed with, and how I am straightened until it be accomplished. Come on. Therefore, it is written, he set his face, as it were, as a flint. Nothing could cause it to, to, to be sidetracked, to, to, to decay, to, to chip away. No one, no one can chip away, was able to chip away at the Father's will and purpose in Moshiach Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. And when we leave our calling, maybe some of you are sitting in this room and you're a bump on a log. You, you, you can help our children. You could help start a feeding ministry instead of worrying about Rabbi Moshe wanted you start a feeding ministry. You have a house, you have a warehouse, you have things that Yahweh has put on your heart, and you're just a stick in the mud, and you're not doing anything. You got all these talents, and you're burying it under a bushel. Wow. If you can work with kids, don't just sit here. If you can work with work with, with technology and you're good with equipment, don't just sit here. Know your calling. Make sure it's your calling, because if it's not, you're going to paralyze somebody else. You're going to confuse the people. You're going to get confused. You're going to get dejected, thinking Yahweh doesn't love you. He's not going to bless you. He'll bless He'll bless Rabbi Moshe. He'll bless Roberto. He'll bless Ted, but he won't bless me. You see, that's, that Ted knows his calling. Ted knows his calling. Ted is faithful to his calling. Okay? He doesn't try to be somebody else. He doesn't try to do something that Yahweh hasn't called him to do. Mm -hmm. Right, Ted? Right. But he's good at what he does. He's faithful. So putting up the sukkahs, helping. I mean, we, we couldn't function without folks like Ted. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So, number one, don't do too much. Number two, don't be lifted up thinking you can do other people's work when Yahweh hasn't called you to do it. Number three, don't do like King Uzziah. Don't do ministry in your own strength. Now, I want to show you. Go down, please, if you would, to verse number uh, 21. No, um, I'm sorry, verse 19. No, verse 18. They stood against sovereign Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn the incense in the Rakom Kadosh before Yahweh, but only for the Kohanim, the sons of Aharon, who are set apart to burn incense. Get out. How would you like telling the king, how would you like telling George Bush? Hey, uh, Mr. Bush, it's not for you to pass laws in the Senate. It's not for you to pass laws in the House. Get back to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue now. Get out. 
you got to have some authority from Yahweh to rebuke a man like George Bush, who has gifting and authority, but not to make laws, rather to be the, in the executive branch and not the legislative branch. You follow me? What would happen if George Bush started showing up in the legislative sessions and ignoring the executive sessions and ignoring the national security meetings and briefings? We would have no Congress, we'd have no presidency, and the people would be confused. For righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. <laughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So now look at verse 18. They stood up against King Uzziah and said, it's not for you to burn incense. Get out of the set-apart place. Look at verse 19. What, instead of saying, yes, you're right, I have sinned, like David. That's why David, Melech David, was a man after Yahweh's heart. Amen. When he got caught, he goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, I've sinned. Not, oh darn, I got caught. Not, oh man, you've been harsh, Yahweh, that the sword will never depart from my house. You've been harsh. You've been mean. No. He says, David said, David said, hey, he says, I, I'm the guy. I, I, help me. Forgive me. <clears throat> but instead, Uzziah was angry. Look at verse 19. And he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the Kohanim, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the Kohanim in Beit Yahweh next to the incense altar. So he got angry. Okay, now listen. What else can we learn from King Uzziah's folly? What else can we learn from King Uzziah's folly? When they called him under the rug, he didn't accept them. When it's time for you to confess, and you want to be a man after Yahweh's own heart, confess your, confess your sin. Don't blame anybody else. Don't blame a weakness. Don't blame an emotional thing. Don't blame a bad day. Confess. That makes you a man or woman after Yahweh's own heart. Number one. Number two, and I've got to learn this the hard way. Turn to your neighbor and say, he learned the hard way. He learned the hard way. He's been a hard, hard long ministry. Forever motion. <laughs> First congregation that we shepherded in Hollywood, okay, Rifkin and I used to have some great arguments, but I mean heated stuff. Not like, sweetheart, where's the keys? I don't know. Why not? No, no, it wasn't like that. It was heavy stuff. Name calling. I mean, we, we did not know how to get along. All right? And we used to fight in front of people. The shul would close. It was a shepherd's sanctuary at Griffin Road. And then right after the service, there were times we, we wouldn't even go home together. She'd take the bus. I'd drive home. I said, get in the car! Please! Everybody's watching! Uh-oh. I mean, we did not get along. We were not fit for ministry, but nobody bothered telling me that. See, I was called, and I, and I knew I was called. But we had not entered that season for Yahweh to release us, okay. even though we had a congregation. So we used to do our fighting after the service, like once a month. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't every week. In front of people. In front of people. Okay, now, so what, what, what did King Uzziah do? He lost his temper in front of the people of Israel and in front of the Kohanim. So those of you who have a calling on your life and you have a purpose of Yahweh has called you to do something in the kingdom of Yahweh, whether it's teaching, preaching, whether it's working with children, visiting the homeless, hospital, that's a great ministry to have, working in hospitals and visiting people that are, that are sick and need help. Well, guess what? Guess what? You know how you can be disqualified instantly with a snap of a finger? Lose your temper in public. Go ahead. Lose it in front of people. Come here. Get into an argument with somebody. Get, in, get into an argument with someone else, on, someone on the worship team, or with me, or with, or with Chris, or with anybody. Go ahead, see what that gets you. Regardless of who's right, who's wrong, who said what, who started it, who looked at each other cross-eyed, or square-eyed, or four-eyed, or eight-eyed, okay? You start losing your temper in public, that is, that is a major, major no-no. So what did Rifkin and I learn? We learned if we're going to disagree, and we're going to have problems, I mean, you know, work it out at home. Huh? Now, that doesn't mean we, 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 we're anywhere near where we used to be. Baruch Hashem Yahweh, we've improved. But when we argue, it's not, never like that, number one. Number two, you don't do it in front of people. You understand? You never argue and lose your temper in front of people. Not in front of people in the ministry, especially people in the ministry. 
King Uzziah lost his temper in front of the Kohanim instead of being humble and saying, yes, I've sinned, put down the censer, go back to the palace and experience Yahweh's chesed and forgiveness and restoration. Instead of doing that, he got angry at the Kohanim, lost his temper, and immediately leprosy hit him. Immediately, not only hit him, he never, he never was restored to chesed. He died with the sin of leprosy. So don't lose your temper. But why? So, in other words, the condition that led to his disqualification as king was what? Strength in his heart, arrogance, pride. But the result of that heart condition was manifold, was it not? Was it not? Did it affect all these areas we've just discussed? But that's not why Yahweh struck him. There's a lot of prideful people who don't die. There's a lot of people who steal other people's fruit in their ministry, and they don't die. And by the way, you know what? You know what a real Jezebel is? Can we, can, we, can we understand and define what a Jezebel is? <clears throat> okay? It's not what the church teaches it. All right? And, it's not, and, and, and guys got it more than gals. Okay? It's a spirit. It's not a, a gender. It's not a gender. It's a spirit. All right? You know, you know what a Jezebel spirit is? It's a spirit of Jezebel that sees Elijah's fruit, the fruit to restore both houses of Israel and call the north to repentance, that tries to steal Yahweh's power, Yahweh's anointing, Yahweh's people, because they're impotent and they can't produce fruit on their own. Yes. So a Jezebel spirit will come after your ministry and your fruit because it is an impotent spirit. It has no, it does not abide in the vine and it cannot produce spiritual fruit, so it comes after your fruit. That's what a Jezebel spirit is. In other words, I can't produce what you're doing. I can't produce your music. I, I can't produce change lives. I can't produce teshuvah. I can't, Yahweh, I'm not a vessel for Yahweh and all these things, but I can sure ruin your reputation. I can sure try to go after your sheep. I can sure try to have to go after your disciples. I can sure try to make, to make things miserable for your ministry and try to steal that which is not mine, that, and with that which is not grown on my branch, but, 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 but I see it growing on your branch and I'm coming to take it away. See, that's the Jezebel spirit. And guys got it more than gallons. Mm -hmm. Get Bridget. quiet now. Okay, now go to Zechariah 6. Zechariah 6. Zechariah. Welcome to my office. Zechariah. Zechariah 6. Page, when you get there, please. Okay, it's going to change soon, I hope. Yeshua's name. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So Yahweh immediately smote King Uzziah with what? Leprosy. Why? What started as a condition in his heart bore what? Sin. And when sin bears, it bears, it brings about death. So first it's the heart condition that births sin, and then sin births. Corruption and death. What was his calling? What was King Uzziah's calling? He was called to be Melech Yehuda, right? Melech Beit Yehuda, king of the house of Yehuda. But when he got visions and illusions of grandeur, and he thought that he could do a better job at being a Kohen than the Kohanim could do at being a Kohen, and he invaded and embarked on their ministry, and said, hey, I can start my own congregation, or hey, I can start my own work, or hey, I can start my own radio ministry, or hey, instead of being faithful to, to, to the man that Yahweh had already put there and placed there and planted there, they short-circuited not Yahweh's plan, they short-circuited their own life. Hello? Yeshua said, if you're not faithful to that which is another man's, how shall Yahweh give you that which is your own? Did not Yeshua say that? Or did Rabbi Moshe say that? Yeshua said, if you're not faithful to another man's things, how will Yahweh give you your own? Ruch Hashem Yahweh. But the, it goes beyond that. Turn to your neighbor and say it goes beyond that. 
Now, I want to read you, and Rob Miller kind of touched upon this at the Union Conference, but I want to touch upon it a little bit more. How one of the most amazing prophecies about Yeshua anywhere in the word of Yahweh is found right here in Zechariah chapter 6. One of the most amazing prophecies anywhere in the entire word of Yahweh. And what Satan has done is saying, shh, it's not about Yahweh. It's about a historical figure. It's not about Yeshua. Shh. But you know the truth is? The truth is Zechariah chapter 6 is all about Yeshua, and it is one of the most potent, powerful messianic prophecies if, if we learn what Yahweh is really saying here in, Zach, in Zechariah chapter 6. Turn to your neighbor and say what Yahweh is really saying. What he's really saying. Okay, now look at verse number 9. Zechariah 6, 9. The word of Yahweh came to Zechariah saying, Receive the matana from the exiles. Who were the exiles? Yehuda, coming back from Babel, Babylon. Receive the gifts from the exiles from Heldai, Tobiah, Yidiah, who have come from Babel. Then you shall go to the same day, enter into the house of Yoshia, Josiah, son of Tsephania. Not this, not this Tsephania, this was a different one. And you, <laughs> and you shall take the silver and gold, make a crown, set it upon the Rosh of Yehoshua, son of Yehotzadak, the Kohen Hagadol, and shall speak to him, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, See ho ish, the man whose man, notice, whose name is the branch. Right. From his place he shall grow or branch out and build the Hekel of Yahweh. Hallelujah. It is he who will build the Hekel of Yahweh. It is he who shall sit and rule on his throne. So those words. Rule on his throne. And, turn your neighbor and say, and. and. Let's try that again. And. And. and be, look, notice, a Kohen on his throne. Two thrones. So Uzziah had the right idea, but he was the wrong dude. Wrong man. Let's say that again. He had the right idea, King Uzziah, uh -huh. but he had the wrong he had the wrong dude himself. He had appointed and ordained and anointed himself. Yahweh said to Zechariah, you see them, you see them, you see them Jews coming back from Babel? Get a hold of those Jews. Grab them now. Now when you now, now when when you when you grab them, make sure you take their gifts. They have gifts for you. Hello? Then after you receive their gifts, the same day, when, then, the same day, enter the house of Yoshia, the, the king, who was Josiah, Dígame. Josiah, the king of Yehuda. Hello? Hello? He was the king of Yehuda. He says, now take the crown, uh, take silver and gold, and make a crown. What is the Hebrew word for crown? Keter. Keter. Take a keter and put it on the head of Yash Yahoshua. What's Yahoshua's real name? Yahoshua. Yahoshua, son of Yahotzedek, the Kohen Hagadol. So he says, take, go into the house of Josiah, take the silver and crown and gold, make a crown. But notice, hello, don't put it on Yoshia, put it on Yehoshua. <laughs> hello? He's acting out of play. He's play acting. He's prophetically play acting what Yahweh will do when Moshiach, the son, Bain Yahweh, comes. He will take the crown of David, the throne of David. He will take that crown and place it on Yehoshua, Yahshua, who is the son of Yahotzadak, or Yahweh the Righteous One. Yahweh the Righteous One. Yah, Yah, Tzadik, Tzadok, Yah, Tzadok, Yahshua, son of Yahweh the Righteous. I get this. And so he says, now speak, verse 12. Now first do and then speak. So he takes the crown, 
he, t he goes from the king's house to where? To the priestly quarters. <laughs> now, y'all are missing this. He's ta he, he takes the crown away from the king, Yoshia, and places it on the head of the Kohen Hagadol, Yeshua. Do you know any Kohen Hagadols named Yeshua? Hallelujah. Hello. Do you know any Kohen Hagadols named Yeshua? The only one. The only one who is really the only son of Yah uh, Sadiq, Yah the righteous one. And so we're talking about Yahweh killing King Uzziah. What a mean Yahweh. What a mean Yahweh. Killing a king. All right, he got in the flesh. Let him slide. All right, what's the big deal? So he thought he was a king. A lot of people think of Superman, the jump off buildings. Yahweh doesn't kill them. A lot of people think they're Madonna. Right? They're 89 years old and they, 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 they look like they're ready for a nursing home. But they dress like Madonna. All right? Does Yahweh kill them? No, he doesn't kill them. So, what was the great sin of King Uzziah? Other than his heart was strengthened. Other than he did too much. Other than he, had, he was prideful. Other than he did other people's ministry. Other than he refused to walk in his own calling. Other than the fact that he lost his temper. Yeah, that, that would have been bad enough, right? Yeah. In public. You, if you're in ministry, you never lose your temper in public. You just shout! You yeah. can't lose your temper. All right? It's better to choke on the rice in the back room than lose your temper. Not choke as in choke, choke, choke as in oh, oh, oh. bite your tongue. Don't lose your temper. Do not lose your it will. If it won't destroy your ministry, it will destroy your testimony. You got a problem with temper? You got a problem with anger? No problem. Deal with it with Yahweh at home in the bedroom or in the living room. Not in front of the people of Yahweh. You potential and, and people who are called to ministry, remember that. It's better to bang your head against the wailing wall than to open your mouth and start yelling in front of other people in the ministry. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a problem with that. Once, you come, once something mean, mean and angry comes out of your mouth, it never comes back. That's the problem. How many things I wish I had a yo-yo when I was preaching? I, I wish I had like a spiritual ooh-ooh, oh-oh, yo-yo. Ooh, I wanted to take it back and pull it back in before, oh, you, before I said it, I was already well, trying to pull it back. It was too late to pull it back. You understand? Once something comes out, that's it. Okay. Now, back to verse 12. So he, he gets the gifts. That's called buttering up the prophet. Then he, then he takes the crown from the king, Yoshia, goes over to the priestly quarters where the Kohen Agadol resides, puts it on the head of the Kohen Agadol, who just happened to be named Yahoshua, son of Yahweh the righteous, who also happened to be the high priest in the days of Zechariah. And Yahweh said, now speak to him, to who? To the king and say, look, the man. What was he? Was Yeshua a man? What did Pilate say when he pointed him out to the crowds of Jewish Israel who were thirsting for his blood? He said, it's your home. Behold the man. Behold your king. The Yehudim said, we have no king but Caesar. Matter of fact, they said, he, his blood be upon us and our children forever. And I pray that prayer all the time. I take it from a negative into a positive. They say, oh, you Jews, y'all Jews, y'all kill Christ, you Jews, you Jews kill Christ. And, 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 and he said, and the Jews said, let his blood be on us, so go ahead and persecute and destroy and kill those Jews because they got the blood of the, of the son of God on their hand. So you know what I said? Wrong, Bubba. That was a prophecy. That was a prophetic pro prayer. May his blood be on all Jewish people for salvation. <laughs> Amen. May his blood be upon us and our children forever. So I turn it into a positive. Take the negative and turn it into a positive. Okay, now look at verse 12. You see the man whose name is Branch. Now in Hebrew, the word Branch 
is the word semach. Now, there are different words. There are branch, branches, twigs, and we don't want to... In this context, the word is semach. Semach. Behold the semach. From his place, he shall branch out. Now, the Hebrew word for branch out, and I looked this up, I just want to make sure, uh, is the Hebrew word, listen to this, you'll smile, tzamach. Makes sense. Semach will tzamach. Same root word, right? The tzemach, or the branch of Yahweh, the man Yeshua, who is the manifestation of Yahweh, the branch, he will tzamach, or he will branch out. Who do you think the branching out took place through? You and I. We, we are the branches. He is the vine. Amen? Yeah. So he is the branch, has branched out. The tzemach has tzamach through us. Make sense? Turn to your neighbor and say, you look like a tzamach. You look like a Samach. That's Tov. That's Tov. It literally means a sprout, a growth. So in Yochanan 15, he is called the branch. We are called the branches. Or in Hebrew, the branches, Netzarim. Now I also want you to notice the word in verse 12. For built. The word is bana. Remember we did a teaching a long time ago? Bana, ben bina, ben bina. Is this not the carpenter's son? The Hebrew word for carpenter builder is what? Bina. So ben bina, the son of the carpenter, will bana or build the temple. There's a whole play on words in the Hebrew between bina, bana, and ben bina. Remember? We did that a few months ago. Okay? So the Hebrew word um, build is the Hebrew word bana, which means this. I looked it up in the, in the dictionary, strong. It means, listen, to either build or rebuild, listen, cause to continue to, listen, cause to continue, restore, as in restore exile, establish or reestablish a family or branching out an established or continued family. So he took the crown off of King Yoshia, put it on the head of the high priest, uh, Yahshua, and said, look, Zechariah pointed at who? At Yo 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 Yahshua or Yahoshua and said, behold the man, the branch. There was literally a man that was there, and there was literally a person called Yahoshua. What does Yahoshua mean? Yahweh saved. People ask me all the time. How do I know it's Yahshua and not Yeshua? You ever get that one? Yeah. How come you spell Yahshua with an A and not an E? You ever get that one? Because Yeshua is not a name. It is the act that Yahweh does to save his people. Everywhere in scripture you look up the word Yeshua. It's Yud, Shin, Vav. It's a verb. It's an action. Yahweh saves. So when you say Yeshua, you're saying salvation. It is not a name. The name is Yahoshua, and the Babylonian captives went to Babylon, and by the time they got back, they contracted Yahoshua to Yahshua. Yahshua is a name. Yeshua is not a name anywhere in Scripture. Hello? Yeshua means to save. Salvation, to save. So when you, you can't say his name is means to save. No, that's not a proper name. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts. Look, see the man whose name is the branch? From his place he shall branch out. What place? You're not listening. What place? From the house of the priests. Is, is he not talking in, in front of the throne of the Kohen Hagadol? Yes, in the throne of the priests. He's pointing at the man and he's saying, Behold the man who is the Tzemach, who will from his...